Sunday, I need every woman to lay hands on your womb. The same miracle that happened in Matthew 9 is getting ready to happen for you. Hey there, New Birth fam. I'm Diallo. And I'm Brittany. And we are so excited to bring you your weekly announcements. Join us for our monthly prayer gathering as we declare our year of answered prayer. It's every first Saturday of the month at 9.30 a.m. Our Year of Answered Prayer Fast is happening every Tuesday all year. That's right. We're fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. all year long. Click the QR code on the back of your chair for more information or visit newbirth.org slash events. Attention men of New Birth. Get ready for a dynamic gathering at the Men's Locker Room event on Monday, April 15th at 7.30 p.m. Also, mark your calendars for Faith and Fitness at Samson's Gym, happening Saturday, April 20th. It's a perfect blend of spiritual and physical wellness. Don't forget to join the Men's Locker Room group on Facebook for daily inspirations, discussions, and updates. Don't miss out on these powerful opportunities to forge stronger brotherhood and faith. See you there, fellas. Attention entrepreneurs and business owners, connect and thrive at New Birth's first Friday networking mixer. Join Dr. Bryant on April 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the new Black Wall Street. Swap ideas, grow your network, and enjoy light refreshments. This event has free entry. Bring your business cards and an open mind. See you there for networking success. Mark your calendars for free tax preparation this Saturday, April 6th from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Join us in the new Citizens Room, courtesy of Congressman Hank Johnson, the IRS, United Way, and hosted by our Financial Counseling Ministry. Get expert help with tax preparation and resolution services. And it's absolutely free. Yeah. Don't miss out. Mark your calendars for a significant spiritual milestone. Join us for baptism on Sunday, April 14th at 1130 a.m. in the vestibule. This is a profound moment of commitment and renewal, and we invite all who wish to take this step in their faith journey. Don't miss this special occasion to witness and celebrate new beginnings in Christ together. See you there. New Birth Family, as we embark on our Show Me a Sign Capital campaign, we embrace a season of divine revelation. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250,000, honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we give, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. Attention students, New Birth is excited to announce that our scholarship applications for 2024 are now open from January 14th through April 22nd. After awarding $100,000 in scholarships to 32 graduates in 2023, we're committed to continuing our support for academic excellence. This is your chance to join the ranks of New Birth scholars who have attended prestigious universities like Morehouse, FAMU, Howard, Tuskegee, and more. Don't miss this opportunity to receive financial support for your college journey. Apply now at newbirth.org forward slash events. 
What's up, family? I am Broderick McBride, the director for Emerging Generations here at New Birth Cathedral. Parents, I have some exciting news for you. Catapult Summer Academy 2024 is underway. If you have a child between the ages of 5 and 12 years of age and you are looking to find them something to do this summer, this is the summer experience you want to sign them up for. Parents, go over to our website now. Fill out the interest form, and we will be following up with you first regarding our application process. We want to see you there. Take care. It's that time again. Save the date for Innovate, June 25th through the 27th. Stay tuned for the release of our speakers, events, and opportunities to volunteer. To all of our first-time visitors, welcome. We hope you have an amazing time with us today. Remember, here at New Birth, our vision is simple. Equip, empower, engage. See, See you, you next, next week. Good evening, New Birth. We have come into his house together in his name to worship him. If that's your testimony tonight, can you give God praise on the front end? We're not a people that have to wait until the battle is over. We know that we win, and so we shout now. We know that he's mighty, and so we reclaim his greatness now. Come on, open your mouth with the clapping of your hands and tell the Lord thank you. You made it all the way to this moment in time. Everything in your life has led up till now. And God, we came tonight to gather in your name from near and far, and we bless your name. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing the family together one more time. For those that are right here in the church and those that are the church everywhere, God, we thank you that we are one. There's no distance in you. And tonight, we pray like Jesus prayed for his disciples. Lord, make us one. Tonight, make us feel your spirit all together. Help us to experience an encounter with you that's fresh, like the morning dew was today, God. We thank you that you've turned over a new season for us. We're in the season of spring. And Father, we will forget those things that are behind and we press forward to the things that are ahead. God, we thank you that you're making everything brand new. Thank you for turning over a new leaf. Thank you for a new lease on life. Thank you, Lord, for a do-over, a start over, a fresh start tonight. God, we want a fresh word from you. Manna from heaven, bread from heaven let the meat of your word come God so that we can be nourished and strengthened God we thank you for the cross we still celebrate the cross yes Easter's over but he who still lived Jesus and we forever give you praise because you reign God we give you all the glory and the praise tonight we thank you for our senior pastor let the presence of God the power of God the prolific word of God come from him tonight with let signs, wonders, miracles follow because we believe. God, tonight, we expect you and nothing else. We expect to see your glory, God. We expect you to touch those that are sitting at home on their living room couch. God, we expect you to touch those that are watching tonight from the hospital. We expect you to touch those that are driving in their car, listening on YouTube. God, wherever we are, God, we thank you that you're right there us and Lord we give you all the glory for what you're going to do this evening our worship comes to you at a new level our praise comes to you with a fresh new new experience with you God knowing that you are God God we don't want to give you the old but tonight we give you the new if that's your testimony come on give him a hand clap of praise God we want to give you a fresh praise because we want to see a freshness of God Oh, God, we give you glory tonight. Let souls be saved. Let people be delivered and draw us closer to Christ. In Jesus' great name, amen, amen, amen. Come on, put your hands together and let's bless the name of our God. Come on, one more time. Can you celebrate Jesus tonight? He is Alpha and Omega. Some call him Jehovah Jireh. I call him Jehovah Nisi. Come on, he's Jehovah Sikinu. He's everything to us. And we lift up that great name tonight. Come on. Hey. So it says this. You are God and you're in control. You're seated higher. You are Lord of all. Great I am. Sovereign ruler. Lion 
Good Sound. evening, Good. Newport. How y'all doing tonight? It is an amazing night here on Tuesday night. We are Beautiful here night. at Group Therapy. Beautiful. Adam, what's up, bro? Listen, it's different up here. Uh, it no, is. Normally, we behind the desk, we behind. but it's a little different. It's a, it's it's a little bright. different. It's a little is. bright. But Real you know bright. what? Our esteemed leader, Dr. Brian, has called on us He's a man. to talk about this amazing Absolutely. room that we are standing in that we are dedicating Absolutely. tonight. Absolutely. This is our amazing NPR Absolutely. studio. So, my name is Drudger Lane, and I am the experience producer here at New Birth. So beautiful. And uh, my name is Adam Legister. I get to serve as one of the production uh, audio leads here. So, tonight we are here to just give a few words and to give you all an overview and a little bit of a highlight of what we've actually done this year in this NPR that enables us to do what we do to serve the vision of this church to help take our broadcast and our production to another level. Amen. So at the beginning of the year, we were asked, uh, what can we do with this room, as I said, to help better serve this ministry? And so as you can see here, this stage that we are actually standing on is brand new. We have, we have some amazing partners uh, across the country that we do business with uh, routinely to uh, help build and see everything that you see here. So this stage is custom built. It is 40 feet wide. It is 37 feet deep. That gives us the stage that we need for our praise team and our worship leaders, as you see. Uh, Adam is going to speak to the vision of this room and some of the things that will take place on this very stage. When we first built this room and started, we actually had 10 lights in here to light this room and to light this stage. And as you can look up and see above, we, ha we now have over 70 of the industry-leading high-powered High concert lighting Bright. that is inclusive of moving lights that allows us to create different atmospheric lighting and feel. We have color bars, as you can see, that also add to the design. Also, when we first built this room, we had 150 panels of an LED wall that you see. And because of your giving and all that you all have done to support our ministry and the production, we now have over 200 panels of LED wall that actually help us enhance the visual assignment that we have for this room. The microphone that I am speaking on, that Adam is speaking on, is a part of our upgrade <laughs> that <laughs> Tiffany sings on, that the praise team sings on, that the band uses. We now have over 10 channels of industry-leading Shure wireless microphones, digital wireless microphones and lavaliers that we use for our productions. We also uh, have upgraded our sound system to now we have surround sound. We have monitors on the stage. We have side fields so that our praise team and band can also hear what's going on. They were rejoicing in the back to hear about the speakers. Right. They were clapping. Right. <laughs> Uh, another thing that we've also done, too, as you see on my hip and as you see me and Trey and Ricardo, we all walk around with these headsets. We have been able to upgrade our intercom system. The comm system is what we use on the production team to communicate. So everything that is happening on stage, that is happening backstage, that is happening behind the scenes in Adam's world, we are able to use these comms. And at one point, we had to be in a very close vicinity in order for these comms to work. And now we have the ability to be outside on the front lawn. I had the ability to be upstairs with Dr. Brian, Amen. getting sermon notes and getting any changes that needs to happen. And I can call down to Adam. I can call down to Jam, who was our video director in the back. Anybody on the team from all the way upstairs in his office because of these upgraded comms to talk about and what's going campus. on. Don't forget off campus. And, and we also have the ability to now work with our remote tech teams as far as California to New York remotely in real time. Woo! Woo! My God. You know. My God. You know, Adam, we could talk about this all day. You like, know we could nerd out. And, and, I, and I'm, really just, I'm really just scraping the barrel of what we've all done. But I, I do want to end on this note here. To help tie this all together, we also, in Adam's world, we built a very high-end, industry level standard that is on the level of CNN, Turner Studios. We now have the ability to produce production at the level of the Grammys and the Oscars because Amen. of the post-production and live broadcast studio we Amen. also have. Amen. And, and Dredrick, uh, one of the other things that is all of it was built and thought about 
by our in-house team. You know, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to know that as we, ultimately the vision was that we would do our best to provide excellence and to provide, provide an opportunity for us to be able to serve the creative culture of the east side of Atlanta and Stonecrest right. and all. Right. And it doesn't exist out here. It doesn't. You know, I think we have two facilities that are further in Covington and, and Conyers that allow you to do things, but they don't allow you to really speak to being able to build your vision at a good place and on holy ground. And, you know, it's, it's yeah, we could talk about the gear and all, but when dreams and things come here, part of the vision of, of Dr. Bryant, and we shout out to Quincy Gamble, who also was a spearhead for us to build this place. Absolutely. It allows us to talk to the culture that's growing so well in Atlanta. And we are able to speak to that culture. And even as we're able to do that, one of the things that um, we are now pushing to do is, is execute external things and do external things, not just us. You got to see hymns in harmony and a lot of the other productions that we're doing. We're doing some amazing things. And we want we the Lord to be able to bless this place. Absolutely. We want God to be able to walk with us and deal with us, not just on only doing church, but doing commerce. Right. You know, we have, we're, we're probably one of the, and Dr. Brian will correct me, but we're probably one of the largest land owner, landowners on the east side. So we're speaking to the culture. Absolutely. So our job tonight, as Jedrick and I are up here sweating, you know, we, this is different. <laughs> uh, but we're here to, to walk through that and pray with us and, and pray with you all and, and bless this room. And if we could do that together, Dred, let's hold hands, you know, because we're united in this thing and we're doing this thing together. Um, wait a minute, because we got to stand on the word. Got to stand That's on right. the word. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so we're going to go from 2 Samuel 7 and 29 where it says, Now therefore may it please you to bless the house of your servant so that it may continue forever before you. For you, O Lord God, have spoken. And with your blessing shall the house of your servant be blessed forever. So, Father, it is with the heart, God, of forever that we tell you thank you. That God forever that you will allow this place, God, to not only just be a dwelling place of you, Lord, but God to be a hub, Lord, for multicultural things, God. To be a hub, God, for multi-generational things, Lord. God to be a hub, not God just for commercial, but spiritual and everything, God, that you've seen fit in your will. God, we are honored, God, that you've blessed us with the opportunity and the resources to build such an edifice, God. God, we're thankful, Father. We tell you thank you. God will have a heart of thanksgiving forever. God, I will have a heart of gratitude forever, God. And as you continue, God, to raise this place called new birth up, God, in the commerce place, God, we'll forever give you our hearts in it, Lord. Everything we do from a fader, God, to a note, it will belong to you. God, everything we do from every single paperwork to invoice, God, we dedicate it all to you. God, we thank you for the wood we stand on. God, we thank you for the carpet we stand on. God, we thank you for the lights that blink. God, we thank you for every single sound wave and waveform that is produced inside this building. And when it leaves this building, God, let it still carry your spirit. God, let it still carry everything that we reside in this place. Because, Father, we are honored to carry your vision. God, we are honored to carry your heart. God, we're honored to care for those, Lord, who hearts need to be cared for in the creative culture, Lord. <sighs> Bless this room, God. Bless this land, Lord. Bless this place called New Birth. We're thankful for you, Lord. We're honored, God, that you bestow such responsibility on us, God, and we will not take it lightly. We'll maximize it. We'll do everything that's necessary to keep up with it. Continue, God, to enrich our hearts and our minds. God, I thank you for the angel of this house. Our God, I thank you for his bravery. God, I thank you for his trendsetterness, God, that allows us to do things that most God would shy away from because it costs too much, Lord. But not only did he say, go ahead, but he walked with us through it, Lord. So, God, we thank you, God, for the heart and the awesomeness, Lord, 
of Dr. Jamal Bryant, God. God, continue, God, to give him, Father God, witty inventions. Great ideas pushing us as a team. For, Father God, not only are we ready, we're willing. And we're able now, God. And we're so thankful. We're thankful. It is with all these things, God, that we ask in your son, Jesus the Christ's name, that we do pray. Amen. 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 And now we go back to our jobs. Now we're back to our regular schedule program. Can you clap your hands for the production team? Come on, y'all. They work so hard. Hallelujah. Now, can you make some noise for Jesus all over the sanctuary? Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. He's worthy of it, y'all. Come on, turn the volume up on your worship. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for everything you've done in this house. We thank you. We thank you, Father. And because you are the greatest power, we shall never be defeated. We give you praise for that. Thank you for making us more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Glory. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, never be defeated. I shall rise, hey, I shall be, I shall go, and victory, no weapon form, yes, Lord, against me will ever overtake me. I'm going to sing that verse again. Come on. I shall rise. Yes, Father. And I shall be I shall go and victory no weapon formed against me Yeah. 
God is exalted. Listen, I need you to take a few seconds and look at every situation that's not like God in your life. I need you to come face to face and say, he's a liar. Hey, and my God is exalted. He's a liar, he's a liar. Yeah, man, he's a liar, he's a liar. Everything he said is a lie, he's a liar. Come on, I dare you to exalt your God. Come on, come on, that's it. He's a liar, he's a liar. He can't steal your joy. He can't steal your peace. He can't take your mind. He's a liar. 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 One more time, we have to say it. The devil is a liar. My God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. Oh, would you lift up that hand towards heaven with dedicating this space back to God we're giving him glory in advance for what is going to happen in this space for the millions of lives that are going to be changed and transformed how God is going to catapult himself out of this building and literally it is going to be transmitted all over the world can you just take 10 seconds and just lift up his name and glorify him? Come on, I want you to magnify him. I want you to lift him up. He's worthy of the highest praise. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that from this place, people are gonna be blessed in Africa. From this place, people are going to be blessed in Asia. From this place, people are going to be blessed in Jerusalem. From this place, people are going to be blessed in the Caribbean and the West Indies. From this place, people are going to be blessed in South America. From this place, people are going to be delivered in Canada. From this place, people are going to be delivered in Russia and in Germany and in the Ukraine and across the street. If you believe that God is going to do something out of this place, come on, let's give God glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My heart is filled uh, this night. My heart is filled uh, knowing uh, where it is that God is positioning us in this season. Uh, just uh, this morning, Forbes magazine with Black Enterprise said the number one place uh, to start a business is now in Atlanta. Uh, and uh, uh, we are about kingdom business. Uh, for the last two years, it has uh, been proffered uh, that the new Hollywood is now Atlanta, uh, where motion uh, pictures are going to be made and going to be filmed and going to be distributed uh, from this state. Uh, and to know uh, that this church is going to be uh, positioned uh, to launch uh, images and messages and stories uh, that the world will be able to see and to capture uh, is beyond what we could think, dream, hope, or even imagine. Uh, I am uh, overwhelmed that we entered uh, this room uh, in the middle of the pandemic and uh, it didn't look nothing like what it looks right now. Uh, I mean, we were just... Uh, uh, a step above using a flashlight and a Panasonic camcorder. Uh, but God is uh, so faithful. I uh, want to take a moment uh, and to thank you, uh, New Birth, both in this room and those of you who are watching online. I want to thank you. This is a multi-million dollar studio. Uh, and I want you to know this is the fruit. This is the fruit of sacrificial giving. Uh, we did absolutely no campaign. We did no pledges. Uh, we had no donations from any celebrities or from any corporations or from any sponsors. Uh, but those of you who believed in the vision of God for this place, uh, that God would take us literally from glory to glory. I need you to do me a favor. Would you just celebrate the givers who are around you? Come on, come on. Come on, I, I wish you would do better than that. 
Thank you for every dime, for every dollar, for every seed, and for every sacrifice. I hope that uh, as a church you are uh, proud of yourself. Very rarely do I have an opportunity to do it. I'm going to do it uh, in a more meaningful way at the end of uh, this service. Uh, but um, I really want you to help me thank God uh, in a robust way for our media ministry, uh, who is... Um, Come on, come on. They are, uh, they, they are at church uh, while you are still asleep on Sunday morning, uh, and they are still at church while you are at breakfast uh, Sunday afternoon, and I am uh, so thankful. I want to say uh, transparently, I didn't really realize the value uh, of all of these gentlemen and women until the pandemic. They uh, really uh, helped to kept uh, the ministry buoyant uh, and on the surface. And uh, I'm grateful at the uh, conclusion of uh, service. Uh, I'm going to be praying for them. I'm going to be anointing them uh, because this is not a hobby. Uh, this is not a volunteer space. Uh, this is where they are called to really do the work of God. Uh, and I am prayerful that uh, God will bless them uh, and uh, bless uh, their families. I, I want to hasten to the word of God. Would you join me in John chapter 3, uh, John chapter 3, verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. It's a uh, conversation uh, that we get to eavesdrop in on uh, uh, Jesus and a gentleman by the name of Nicodemus. John chapter 3, verse 3. Jesus says to Nicodemus, very truly I tell you, nobody will be able to see the kingdom of God until they are born again. I better say it again slowly. This is what Jesus says to Nicodemus. Very truly I tell you, nobody in this room, nobody online, nobody on YouTube, nobody on Facebook will be able to see the kingdom of God until they are born again. You may be seated. I, uh, I want to uh, share today as a, a thought, I finally get the picture. I finally uh, get the picture. Uh, I uh, grew up, as you know, as uh, a preacher's kid, and uh, I remember uh, one of uh, the most bristling moments of uh, my dad's uh, pastorate. We used to have a uh, outreach of love a crusade every August uh, at my home church, Bethel AME in Baltimore, Maryland. And uh, one August, our preacher, this is long ago because uh, his evidence, uh, those of us who grew up old school, it wasn't a, a different preacher every night. It was the same preacher all week. I mean, all week it was the same preacher. And uh, our revivalist was uh, the late uh, Dr. E.K. Bailey, uh, from the Concord Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. And uh, this is uh, the 80s when this uh, revival took place. So there was no Facebook, uh, there was no Instagram, there was no YouTube, uh, there was no Twitter, there was no Snapchat. Uh, this is the 80s, so uh, Gen Z, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, it wasn't even no cell phones. And uh, we sent one of uh, our ministers to go pick up Dr. E.K. Bailey uh, from the airport uh, on that Monday afternoon because he was to begin the revival uh, that night. And uh, hours went by and uh, the minister came back to the church alone. And uh, Dr. Bailey uh, was on the phone from a pay phone calling to the church. How come y'all didn't send nobody to pick me up? I've been out here for hours. And uh, the minister said, I was there for hours. Ain't no way he there. And Dr. E.K. Bell said, I've been here for hours. Ain't no way he came to pick me up. And uh, we sent him back out there, said, tell us exactly where you're going to be standing. Uh, and the minister is going to come get you. The minister went back out. I found Dr. Bailey and uh, said, I'm sorry, I passed you three times. I passed you three times. And Dr. Bailey said, then what is the problem? He said, the problem is you don't look like your picture. Uh, the, the, the picture that you sent in to us uh, is so old. 
<laughs> that it, it doesn't look like who I was sent to pick up. I want to uh, suggest to you humbly tonight that there are a whole lot of people who no longer come to church because we don't look like our picture. Uh, what it is that Jesus projected and said what we are supposed to be and what we are supposed to look like and what we are supposed to la love like and how it is we are to express uh, like. Uh, people come in and say, this can't be the church uh, that Jesus died for. Malcolm X famously said, I'd be a Christian if it wasn't for Christians. Uh, Christians is what drove me away uh, from believing in Christ. I want you to take a moment and think about how, what is the picture of Christendom you portray at your office? I, I want you to think when your neighbors see you, do they have a picture of what a Christian is supposed to look like? Christian is supposed to talk like, a Christian is supposed to love like, is supposed to forgive like. And maybe the picture of the church is 2,024 years old. And so it's become outdated. Uh, we no longer have a fear of God. Uh, we no longer have an aspiration towards righteousness and holiness. Uh, we no longer take prayer as a, a rubric of our belie belonging and our believing. We no longer study the word of God until we get to church on Sunday morning. Do we look like the church? How are we really of the church of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? About 50 years ago, there was a play on Broadway and the play was called Octomaroon. And the story is absolutely amazing. It's no longer running on Broadway. But the play talks about how one gentleman in a small town is the only one who had a camera. Everybody in the town had to go to him to get their picture done. Uh, the rising climax of uh, this play, The Octomaroon, is uh, everybody wanted to fight him. Everybody wanted to fight him uh, because they argued, I don't look like the picture you took. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, they wanted to break his camera, uh, take it away from him, steal it, uh, and burn it to the ground because they didn't like how they looked. And uh, the gentleman says, uh, the instrument does not lie. If, if, if this is the image, it's not the camera's fault. You got to take some responsibility for how you look. Uh, isn't it amazing? It wasn't until uh, cell phones that we could really uh, co-opt and adopt that philosophy that cameras don't lie. We, we really could have believed that till about 12 years ago uh, when the iPhone started getting upgraded and uh, <laughs> Androids came into the marketplace and, and they stopped uh, sending pictures and sending phone calls and receiving them. Uh, something revolutionary happened uh, when cameras began the capacity to be able to take pictures. Uh, what you don't understand is that uh, uh, the picture is not real. The picture is not real. It is just the capturing of a three-fourths of a millisecond. It is just that moment. So uh, when you take a picture, it is based off of the lighting. Uh, my daughters would tell you, it's based off of the angle. Uh, it's, it's based off of the background. Uh, it's uh, based off of, here it is, the room that you are in. It's based off of the height of the photographer. Uh, my staff always gets on, I probably got the oldest iPhone or anybody uh, on the staff. It's just got one single camera on it. it ain't, it ain't even three to four. I mean, it's just one. I don't even know what number iPhone I got. Uh, and so it, it depends on what device uh, it is that you have. So uh, I came in uh, earlier today uh, with uh, the media team because uh, I was just excited about this room. Uh, and uh, I told them, just take pictures of me in the room. Just take pictures of me in the room. I need this for historicity. Uh, that I was in this room. I was in this room and I wanted to be on this stage. I'm just posing, take my picture in this room. I, I need to freeze frame it. Nobody will be able to say uh, that I was not in the room. Uh, but the picture does not tell the story. Uh, and now it becomes overwhelmingly difficult uh, because while I am the subject of the picture, I don't have the authority of the photographer. 
I think I lost you. I'm, I am the subject of the picture, but I do not have the authority of the photographer. Uh, so I had two uh, photographers in the room with me today, uh, and they took pictures of me walking across the stage. Uh, and after I got off the stage, they showed me the picture. I said, Doc, is this okay? I said, oh, no, this is great. I, I got to freeze this. I need you to download it. Uh, I can print it. Here it is. Uh, because I am dealing uh, with the image and the authority of cameras from 40 years ago. That that's the end of it. Uh, because when cameras began, here it is, they did not have the capacity to filter. Uh, they did not have the capacity uh, to Photoshop. Uh, so I got to show you something. Uh, the photographers then took my picture and then photoshopped it. Uh, and they added people into the picture. Here it is. They added people into the picture who were never with me. I need y'all to say they were never with me. They were never with me. But if you post this picture, if you post this picture, then you can assume I am with the people who are in the picture. Now listen, I didn't invite them on my stage. I never posed with them, but they were fused into a picture that I did not sign off on. I think y'all are lost uh, because uh, you are so caught up in who's in the picture that, that, that you're missing the whole presentation of what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, because you thinking about Diddy and 50 cents, that's not what I'm trying to tell you. What I am trying to tell you is sometimes uh, you have a picture in your mind of who you supposed to be with and who you have in your mind as a picture of who you are supposed to be with is not the picture God has for you. Uh, so God has got to filter people out of your picture so you understand I got more for you than that. Because if you keep them in your picture, your life is going to be messed up. If you keep them in your picture, you're going to have a curse added to your destiny. If you keep them in your picture, you're going to hold back what it is that I have for you. So you got to figure out who have I added into my picture that God never intended. Uh, who do I have in my mind that I have not intended? Uh, what has happened in the filter is not only do you add people in your picture, but now there are special effects. And so the special effects of the picture, while I took the picture on the stage, uh, the special effects, it, once it is added, will put me in places uh, that I have no business being in. It puts me in places that I have never stepped in. So David put it this way, if I make my bed in hell, he is still right there. If I go to the lofty heights of heaven, he is still right there. The reason why I can give God glory in this space is because there were some places I never should have been. But in the lowest part of my life, God met me there and elevated me to a whole nother position. You sitting there because you ain't never been in that position. But there are five of y'all that just had a flashback to say, God, when I was drunk, when I was high, when I was depressed, when I was suicidal, you changed the picture. God has the authority. He has the authority to change who are you are with. He has the authority to change where you were so that you can shift the position. Uh, those who were raised in the 60s know that you were raised uh, in the 60s to question everything. Sometimes you got to question the picture that is in front of you. Uh, you got to question what it is that you are seeing. You got to question what it is that you have framed. Jesus touched a man one day and asked him, do you see anything? God, I can't hear nobody. He said, do you see anything? And the man reported back, yes, I see something, but I see men, but they look like trees. Now, there are two things that you got to notice in that that gives us evidence that the man was not born blind, that he had seen trees before and he had seen men before. So what he is looking at, he knows is out of order. 
Sometimes when you look at your bank statement, sometimes when you look at your medical statement, sometimes when you look at your credit report, you got to tell God something about this is out of order. I need you to touch me again so I can see what you see for my life. And I feel like some of y'all ought to shout because God said I'm about to change the picture for what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. He's giving me a change. He's giving me a change the picture before you. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. We won't all sleep. But in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the dead in Christ are going to rise again. But it's coming from a trumpet sound. But I need you to see where the verse starts. We look through a glass dimly. It don't look like much to you. But you looking at what you looking at. But you ain't listening for what you should be listening for. God says sound changes vision. Oh, uh, y'all didn't hear what I just said. Sound changes vision. If you want to change what you're looking at, change what you're talking about. There's somebody that ought to be giving God glory. God said, if you praise me down here, I'll change what you see out there. There's got to be a sound that is connected. The sound connected. Uh, many, many years ago, uh, many years ago, I was at, uh, I was at uh, Bishop Noel Jones' birthday party. It's many, many, many years ago. It was a regular party. And uh, when, I, when I'm at the party, uh, Stevie Wonder is at the party. And uh, I had the overwhelming privilege uh, to meet Stevie Wonder, shake his hand, uh, took a picture with him. Uh, that was a Friday. That Sunday, I go back to the Cedar Refuge, and uh, Stevie Wonder is there. I walk past him, I'm talking to somebody else, and uh, he says, Jamal, I said, I said, man, this guy really ain't blind. <laughs> yeah. How'd he know it was me when he can't see me? God help me, he says, even though I'm blind, I haven't lost my hearing. And if I've ever heard your voice, God help me, even when you ain't talking to me, I can hear when you are in the atmosphere. God, I'm preaching already. Some of y'all think there are moments God don't see you. But if he can hear your voice, when he hears your voice, he said, if you call me, I will answer. I can't, if you ask anything in my name, it shall be given unto you. You, you got a question. You got to question everything. There's a, uh, uh, my favorite photographer is a, a gentleman out of the Harlem Renaissance uh, by the name of James Van Der Zee. And uh, he captured the essence of uh, uh, black beauty and black excellence uh, in the middle of the Harlem Renaissance. But one of the most famous uh, photographs uh, is a photograph of uh, Winston Churchill. Uh, it was not captured uh, by James Van Der Zee, uh, but by a uh, British photographer. Uh, that uh, photograph is uh, known all over the world and has been uh, called the Iron Lion. The Iron Lion. The reason why that picture is so significant uh, is people uh, took that picture uh, as inspiration for de determination in the middle of the war. Uh, that's uh, when it is that the whole world was uh, fighting against Adolf Hitler uh, and the Nazis. And so they took that as a face of vision and a face of determination and as a first face of purpose called the Iron Lion, Winston Churchill. Uh, the photographer in his own uh, memoir uh, said, uh, many people who looked at the picture uh, saw the picture wrong. Uh, it was not a focus around the Nazis. It was not uh, him determined and purposed to win the war. Uh, he said, I've been with Winston Churchill for two hours and I could not get him to sit up straight. <laughs> I couldn't get him to sit up straight and all the more perplexing, I'm trying to take this picture of Winston Churchill who is our national war hero and he will not look straight. He said, the problem is, the whole time that we're trying to do this a photograph, he's got a cigar in his hand. 
And uh, those who have uh, studied the life of Winston Churchill, you know that he was a, a chain smoker. So the photographer said, I, I ran up to him and just snatched the cigar and then ran back behind the camera. So he says, the look you see <laughs> had nothing to do with the Nazis. <laughs> he wanted his cigar back. And he was so mad with me. But all the press was there so he didn't want the press to see him fight me. So I told him, just give me one minute. I'm going to give it back to you. And he looked at me with a snarl on his face and refused to smile. Here it is, because I had taken what he wanted. I think I lost you. Uh, there are a whole lot of people who misunderstand you. Uh, when they see a look on your face, they think you are arrogant and stuck up and standoffish and they don't have any idea it got nothing to do with you. I'm mad for what the devil stole from me, but I got a feeling that everything that was taken is about to be restored back into my life. Y'all ain't saying nothing. There's somebody who needs to know you about to get your smile back. You about to get your joy back. You about to get your peace back. We've been made endure for a night, but joy. Says, I'm getting ready to give you a different picture for your life. In, uh, uh, in our text for tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that there was a gentleman who is uh, our central character who shows up uh, to Jesus, but uh, it is interesting that the writer uh, tells us a nuance that is important, and that is that Nicodemus comes at night. Uh, he comes uh, at night because he doesn't want to be seen talking to Jesus. Uh, he's got, quote, a reputation to protect, uh, and he doesn't want to jeopardize it uh, being seen with Jesus. You'd be amazed how many Nicodemuses are in this room. That, uh, that when, uh, when they're at a corporate lunch, they don't want to say grace because they don't want to run the risk of being seen with him. Uh, when it is that God gives them good news and they're not at church, uh, they will restrict their thanksgiving because they in Target, because uh, they in the mall, because they in line at bank, uh, because they don't want to be associated with him uh, because it's high risk to their reputation. Uh, but there are those of us in the room that don't uh, care who's looking, uh, don't care what's going on. Uh, my problem is when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all oh, he's done for me, my soul cries out. Oh, yeah. He comes to Jesus at night. And when he comes to Jesus at night, he says, you have to be the son of God. Uh, because the kind of works that you are doing, the kind of miracles that you are performing, verse number two, it would not happen lest God be with you. Uh, that's what I speak over your life tonight. That you get ready to traffic in the supernatural. Uh, the stuff that God is going to give you the power and the authority to do, people will have no question. God must be with you. I, I need you to affirm that for somebody. It's the first time tonight. Would you look at somebody and tell them, God must be with you. That you ain't lost your mind yet. That you keeping your family together. That the lights are still on. That doors are still being open. That demons are trembling. That your body is healed. That you haven't committed suicide. God must be with you. I say God must be with you. Verse number three. Verse number three. Of chapter 3, Jesus says, nobody, hear this, will have, I want to invert the text. Uh, Jesus says in the original translation uh, in the Greek, nobody will see the kingdom. Nobody will see the kingdom. I want to take it uh, from the contemporary English version. Nobody will have a picture of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I can't take it all. Let me just get a glimpse of what glory is going to look like when I get out of the hell that I'm in right now. God, help me. God, 
God said, you sure you want a picture of what your future is going to look like? He said, can you handle the angle? I'm going to let you see your future while you're still behind on your bills. Can you handle the lighting? I'm going to let you see the picture while you're in a dark place. Can you handle the picture? It won't even just be for the present. It's going to be for your future. Says, I am. Uh, Shakespeare put it this way. Uh, here's what William Shakespeare said. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so when you are born again, you have the unique authority to be the subject and the photographer. This is only for anointed people. When you walk in alignment with God for your life, you can start filtering pictures yourself. Hallelujah. Nobody told me the road was going to be easy, but I don't believe he's brought me this far. He says, I'm going to let you edit your own pictures. Hallelujah. I ain't always going to be depressed. But when I think of a day that's gray and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and I prophesy to myself and say tomorrow. I, I don't know how many of y'all got an orphan and the anointing, but you better start preaching to yourself. Tomorrow is going to be the best season of my life. Tomorrow, no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper. But here's what I need you to see. I'm going to be consistent uh, with the text in chapter 3, verse number 3. says, uh, nobody, unless you are born again, uh, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom. Here it is. Uh, or what I have uh, used in contemporary English, have a picture of the kingdom. Now, everything that I have uh, given to you in uh, the aforementioned examples was related to you. Yeah, but he says, when you're born again, you want to see a picture of the future of the church. Oh my God, I, hallelujah. I, I want to see what the kingdom of God on earth is going to look like. Uh, so when you saw yourself in a different house, you shouted. Saw yourself in a different car, you shouted. When you saw yourself raising different, living off different income, you shouted. But how do you respond when God gives you a sneak preview of what the body of Christ is getting ready to look like? Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. How do you give God glory knowing that the oil gonna be so heavy that people are going to be slain in the spirit in the parking lot before they ever get in church. Y'all ain't saying nothing. That they're going to be testimonies that I came in church with tumors in my body. But by the time I left out, there was no blood clot in my heart. How do you see the church? How you see in the church? And when you get a picture of what the church is supposed to look like and how we're getting ready to function, I ain't talking about no mini houses. I ain't talking about no studio. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I ain't saying nothing about no medical clinic, about senior housing. I'm talking about the church triumphant. I'm talking about the bride of Christ that God is coming back for without spot or blemish. I speak, I know y'all ain't ready for it, I speak revival that the fresh wind of the Holy Ghost is getting ready to blow through this ministry. I want those of y'all with the same vision. Will you lift up that hand? I want you to open up your mouth. I want you to give God glory. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, lift him up. Lift him up. For the world is hungry. For the living bread, for the answer, Jesus gave the key. If I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Y'all better open up your mouth. 
Not Eddie Long, not Jamal Bryant. Here's the line two. Don't exalt the preacher. Don't exalt the pew. But lift him up for men to see. If I be lifted up, I'll draw. Hallelujah. 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 Lift up that hand. I want you to have a picture of what the church is going to be. A picture of what the church is going to look like. Picture of how the church is going to function. I am not impressed. I'm not impressed by an Easter crowd. Oh my God. Your expectation should be, that's what it's supposed to look like every Sunday. Oh, y'all ain't got that kind of faith. Hallelujah. 135 people got saved on Sunday. That's what I expect every Sunday. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. I want for just one moment, musicians help me. Just in a moment of worship, I want God to give you snapshots of coming attractions. What the church is getting ready to be. I'm believing by faith that the weight of his glory will be so heavy that preaching will be unnecessary. Right. Y'all ain't got that kind of faith, huh? I'm believing by faith people are going to be flying here from all over the world because they heard a rumor healing happens at new birth. God, God I can't hear nobody. People will be dragging their children in church because this is the place where we chase demons and break demonic strongholds. I'm believing by faith People who have been alcoholics and drug addicts will come within the shadow of this steeple and say there's something about the power and the glory and the splendor of God that emanates from this place. That hand is lifted. For just 10 seconds, 20 if you can handle it. Two things are getting ready to happen in this worship encounter. I want you worshiping God for where the church is going and all the more, listen to me, I want you to worship for where your role is in the church. I want you to hear something that you probably never heard in your whole church life. God can use a cameraman. God can use a sound tech. I can't hear nobody. God can use somebody dealing with lights for his kingdom to be advanced. I want your hand lifted, just 20 seconds, open up your mouth. Just begin to worship that God will give you a vision on where you're supposed to be, how you're supposed to function, how you're supposed to flow. What is your place? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted two different waves, listen to me. Dredrick, I need you to help me coordinate it very quickly. In two different ways, I wanna pray over every member of our media team. Somebody put the camera in the position it's supposed to be in. Hallelujah, send me that first one. Just leave all of the buttons and knobs where they are. Hallelujah, but I, you are anointed for ministry. You're anointed for assignment. God is going to use you to help bring millions into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Wherever it is that you are, that first wave, I want you to come meet me on this stage very quickly. Hallelujah. Those of you even in that back room, in that exterior room, I need you to come as quickly as you can. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, quickly, quickly. Hallelujah. The excessive ones who are not, hallelujah, 
moving anything right now, operating anything right now, I need to anoint you for this assignment. Come on, all the way across. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody lift up your hand. Hand. Hallelujah. For you are Come on, one more time, one more time. You are Alpha, you are Alpha. You are Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. For you are Hallelujah. Let's move this from. Thank you. We give you glory. We give you. Come on. We worship. Listen to me. It's two different groups in this room. Half of you are singing. The other half of you, I need you praying. Because whenever you do ministry and millions of lives are connected to it, the enemy is unhappy. The people who are standing before you behind the scenes since the pandemic, their families have been under attack. Their marriages have been under attack. Their children has been under attack. Their health has been under attack. Their finances have been under attack. And they didn't even know how to interpret it because in the black church, we believe if you're in ministry, you need a microphone. You gotta be on stage. But I'm telling you, the gentlemen, the ladies behind me are in ministry. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I said they are in ministry. And I'm believing that God has something special in their life for their life and for their future. And so if you're not singing, I need you to just begin praying for them. Come on, open up your mouth. Either sing or pray, sing or pray, sing or pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I pray over your life, the grace of God, the peace of God, the love of God over your life. I declare it in Jesus' name. The love of God, I declare it over your life. The love of God, I speak it over your life in Jesus' name. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. Hallelujah. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God, I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. I speak it over your life. The peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. I speak it over your life. Hallelujah. 
peace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God. I speak it over your life. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up that hand. We worship. Hallelujah. For you are Come on, clap that hand right where you are. Come on, clap your hand right where you are. Hallelujah. I want to, um, I want to open a different door tonight. Listen to me, I'm going to open a different door uh, tonight that I'm not sure I've done uh, while being your pastor, but I want to open a different door in a moment uh, for people to get saved and a moment after that for people to join the church. But I want to open uh, this altar. Here it is. For those, I want you to hear my language and intentionality uh, who feel like you uh, might be called to serve in the media ministry. Uh, there's an assignment. There's more to do than singing in the choir and being in the usher, serving in security, uh, being a preacher. But there are those of you that may be sitting on a skill set. There's some of you who may be suppressing a passion. The others of you who may be neglecting a gift. The others who may just have a peaked interest. Maybe this is where I can function. This is where I can flow. This is where I can operate. Maybe this is where God would have me. I don't know. Pastor, I don't have any experience in it. Uh, but, but this may be where I can flourish, where I can blossom, where I can find my assignment. If that's where you are and you're in the room, would you come meet me at this stage very quickly? If you're in the room and you may be pulled or drawn into that arena, I want you to come meet me at this altar. New birth, would you clap your hands even now? Come on, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Come on, you don't know what gifts are amongst us. You don't know what talents God may be tapping into and might have to utilize. Hallelujah. I want you to hear my words. I didn't call for volunteers. I didn't ask for people that got spare time. I said those of you who may be called into this area, that this may be where it is that God uh, can flourish me, that God might be able to use me. I'm praying that, uh, Brother Dredge, where are you? Wait, yes, yes, yes. Uh, immediately uh, after the service, uh, I want you to come meet him on this stage at the end of the service. I want you to come so he can tell you uh, about all of the different nuances, areas, and departments uh, and see where it is that you can fit. Uh, it may not be behind the camera. It may be on lights. It may not be on lights. It may be on sound. Uh, it may not be on sound. It may be on Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know uh, where it is, but we're going to need you. This, this group eats donuts. Amen. Uh, and so I, I need you to help us. New birth, would you clap your hands for those who are... You can go back to your seats. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all. New birth, clap your hands for these vessels, for these instruments. All that suggests to us is that there's a place for everybody. There's a space for everybody. There's an area where everybody can find, and I'm believing that this year that you're going to be able to find it, you're going to be engaged in it. Uh, media ministry partner back with me if you're in your appropriate place. I'm going to give somebody an opportunity to join this magnificent ministry. I'll be a part of this incredible church. Somebody who wants to surrender their lives over to God who are saying in no uncertain terms, uh, I, I, got to, uh, I got to get right with God and I need to do it right now. If that's where you are, I want you to uh, just uh, imagine, teleport yourself as if it's just me and you in the room. Uh, can you imagine millions of dollars were spent just to get you in this space tonight? Uh, that you are not here by accident or coincidence. Uh, you're here by divine providence. If you're here... Uh, you're saying, Pastor, I need a church home. I don't even know how I got in here on a Tuesday night. I'm going to tell you this. If you are an introvert, uh, Tuesday night, the best night to join. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't like standing in front of a whole lot. This is your night. Uh, I'm telling you, you don't hit the jackpot. Uh, but I, I, I want you to not take the risk of uh, leaving out of this place unsaved and unchanged and untransformed. 
uh, but I'm believing that God can do something miraculous even in your life. Uh, those of you who are watching online from around the world, I would be so honored to be your pastor, but most important for me is that Jesus is the Lord of your life that he is the God of your salvation. If you're glad, here it is, if you're happy, if you are expectant about the picture God is getting ready to show you in your life, would you give God some praise for it right now? Amen. Bless the Lord. You may be seated for just one moment. Amen. Now, I told you just uh, moments ago, I built all of this without asking you for nothing. <laughs> because for some of you, you don't walk by faith. Uh, you, you walk by sight. Now you see it. Here it is. Amen. And so I, I want us uh, collectively, corporately, uh, in the spirit of unity, uh, I want you to help us uh, to be uh, able to do more of what it is God is calling us to do. Uh, what the team uh, initially envisioned, uh, we couldn't do it all. Uh, quite frankly, we, we didn't have the money to do it. We got a roof that we got to uh, enhance. We got HVAC uh, that we've got to uh, upgrade. Uh, we got signs all over the building uh, that look like the Rugrat Hotel uh, that, that's going to have to be modified. Uh, but I'm grateful for this space that God has given to us. I, I want you to stretch yourself. I want you to stretch yourself. I'm believing some of these young people on this stage, some of these young people on this stage, God is going to trust to make movies. Some of the young people on this stage, God's going to trust uh, to pilot television programs. Some of the people who are on this stage tonight, you have no idea, uh, are going to shift the internet upside down. Uh, but they're going to be able to come back and give God glory because they were trained at the church. Uh, that ministry is what gave them the opportunity. Uh, they would have had to wait summers to work for Tyler Perry. They would have to wait years to get to century 20, uh, 21st Century Fox. Uh, but because they had a heart of ministry, God gave them an avalanche, an avenue, and a door. And I'm believing that God is going to use them in strange and peculiar and unique places. Uh, and I want to be able to see uh, back into them. And so as a consequence, let me ask if I can, everybody, let's uh, put ourselves in a posture and in a position to give on tonight. Uh, every person, media ministry partner, uh, with me on this night partner with me on this night uh, every person uh, you ought to be inspired tonight uh, your faith ought to be stretched on tonight I'm telling you everything in your dreams ought to be illumined uh, you, you should be a lightning bug right now uh, saying I glow in the dark amen uh, but I want every person uh, I'm, I'm so a seed tonight of a hundred I want to challenge as many of you that can and will, those of you uh, around the world, thank you so very much. I, I have not, and I neglected to do so. Would you help me thank God for Bishop George Bloomer on last Tuesday, uh, who uh, uh, stood in the gap uh, for me. Uh, he did an amazing, magnificent job. I was on uh, assignment uh, with uh, Global United Fellowship for our board retreat, uh, and uh, I'm grateful that I have friends that I can trust uh, to handle the house while I'm away. Amen. Uh, no, whenever I'm not here, I'm always going to leave you with Allstate. You're going to be in good hands. Amen. Uh, know that. But I want every person sowing. I want every person sharing. Uh, I want every person uh, giving. Uh, Pastor Turner has uh, some uh, highlights and some clips that uh, we need to be abreast uh, and made privy to. Uh, she's going to share those with us so that uh, we are armed with all of the appropriate information uh, that we need to know. Pastor Turner, won't you come? Give God some praise for her as she comes at this time. Hallelujah. Were you blessed tonight? Woo! Look at somebody and say, I get the picture. Hallelujah. Tonight was amazing. Let's just give the Lord another round of applause for this incredible space and truly what the Lord is doing here at New Birth. Believe it or not, this is what our fourth grand opening already, and so or grand launching, grand dedication, and so we're grateful. We had the museum, and uh, we have our uh, so many things that are going on, and we are so grateful for this season of dedicating new things to the Lord. Amen. We have so many things that uh, we have coming up that I want to share with you before we go. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, somebody say prayer. 
Hallelujah. We know that our theme for this year is the year of answered prayers. And so we have really been going before the Lord, believing that he is still a God that answers and answers by fire. And so we want to invite you out to prayer on this first Saturday of the month. Corporately, we pray together in the chapel at 930 a.m. How many of you are going to press your way to prayer on Saturday? Oh. <laughs> All right, people, hallelujah. We're going to press our way to prayer on Saturday. Bring somebody with you. And right after prayer, we are having tax preparation right here at the church. Hallelujah. So you will have people that are trained and licensed to be able to do your taxes. If you want to register for that, you can go right online to do that right now. And so we are grateful for that. There are so many things happening this upcoming Friday. How many entrepreneurs do we have in the house? Yes, Lord, so many business owners. And a couple of months ago, we had a special service where we gathered all of the business owners together and they were able to connect. And so this will be another opportunity for our entrepreneurs to network this Friday at Black Wall Street. So we want to make sure that every business owner in the building is connected that evening. Also, we are thrilled to be able to launch our college internship program again this summer. Last summer, we had some, yes, we had some incredible Incredible, incredible students that served with us really in every capacity of ministry, and we want to do the same thing. So many of you have uh, students that are in town that will be finishing school for the summer, and you want them to get connected, have them apply online. And for some of you, your children will be coming back home for the summer, and you want to make sure that they get involved, and so we want to have them connected again. Can you stand to your feet tonight? Listen, grab somebody's hand, tell them you love them. Were you blessed by the word of the Lord tonight? Ooh, that thing was so good. We bless the Lord. We bless the Lord for so many dedications, so many beautiful things that the Lord is doing right here at New Birth. Do you believe that God favors New Birth? Hallelujah. And because God favors new birth and you are a member and are connected to new birth, do you know that the oil flows from the top down? So do you know that that means that God also has to favor you and your household as well? And so I'm so excited about what God is doing every couple of months. We are opening something new and dedicating something new. And so what that says to me is that the things that I believe God to open and dedicate in my own life, hallelujah, that he is going to do it for us. Some of you need to go start looking for commercial real estate. Go start looking for your home. Go start looking for your studio and believe that you will be doing dedications as well. Do you come into agreement with that? Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand next to you. You might be going to the person's house, new house that you hold in hand. You might be at the launch of their new business. Hallelujah. Squeeze that hand tight and say, I'm going to be there. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for we realize that this is your doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. And so, Father, we give you glory and honor for breathing on the work of new birth. Thank you, Father, that you continue to help us paint the picture that you would have us to be as kingdom men and women of God. We thank you for this place that you have set up for this time in the earth to show as an example, Father, of what you can and will do if we keep Keep our hand to the plow if we keep our hearts before you and if we keep the picture of the kingdom of God that you have given to us in your word father that you will expand us and that you will bless us in the earth and so father we thank you tonight that you will withhold no good thing from us in this season we thank you tonight God that eyes have not seen father nor have ears heard the things that you have prepared for those who love you and so God God, we love you tonight. We honor you tonight. We give you glory tonight because you are a good God. And honor is due you. Father, as we leave this place, we thank you for your supernatural protection, God. We thank you that you cover us and you keep us, that the angels of the Lord go before us. And until we meet back at this place, oh God, we love you, we bless you, we honor you, and we will take you with us, Father, everywhere we go so that you will know that we are not ashamed 
of the gospel of Jesus Christ and we will tell the world what you did for us, how you transform our hearts, how you changed our minds and God, how you have renewed and rescued us from all of darkness. We will be the light in the earth. We give you glory and honor in Jesus name. If you are in agreement with that, squeeze that hand, tell somebody you love them. Give the Lord praise before you leave this place. Hallelujah.